Did you know that lots of cyber attacks are due to hackers using publicly known vulnerabilities to gain access to your IT systems and networks? Wouldn't it be great if you knew what your vulnerabilities were? Well, if you use Microsoft 365, you can find out. And guess what? That is the topic for today's video. But before we start, a quick introduction as always. My name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. I've got an IT company, Integral IT and we help clients with their IT support, their Microsoft 365 and their cyber security. So do me a quick favor, if you get any value from this video, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Now in today's video, the discussion is all about vulnerability management. But before we get onto that in technical terms, what's a vulnerability? Well, if we talk about vulnerability in a person, what would be your first thought? It might be that that person has a weakness in a certain area. Maybe that person is older and frail and they're not able to walk very well. The first thing is, if we know what the vulnerability is, we can put things in place to help that person. We could provide that person with a walking aid. We could provide that person with meals every day. These these little things can help that person less vulnerable. Now let's talk about vulnerabilities when it comes to our home security. We don't want thieves breaking in and stealing things. So maybe a vulnerability at home is that we go out and leave the doors open. Or maybe we live in an area where crime is quite high. Or maybe we don't have an intruder alarm. These are all vulnerabilities. And the end result could be that someone breaks into our home and steals all our possessions. So what can we do? Well, we can start locking the door. We can get a burglar alarm. We can get CCTV. We could even move house. But the first thing is we have to be aware of what our vulnerabilities are. In the IT world vulnerabilities also exist. These vulnerabilities come from software. They come from the configuration of certain systems. When we think about it, software is everywhere. Look at home. We've got our iPhones. We might have an iPad. We might have a smartwatch. We might have a smart TV. We might have an electric car. All these are powered by software. In the workplace you might have a laptop. On that laptop there might be Windows 11. You might use an Apple computer. You might have applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. How do you browse the web? Do you use something like Edge or Google Chrome? All this is software. Then we look at all the hardware in our offices. We've got a printer, we've got a router, we've got a VoIP phone. And what are these powered by? Yes, software. Now software can have vulnerabilities. At best, it might mean that the software doesn't work very well. At worst, it might mean that the software causes a risk to your business. It might be a way in for a cyber criminal. So let's think for a minute about your workplace. Your business might have 10 computers. It might have 100 computers. It might have 10,000. There's all these different bits of software on each computer. And then people might access their emails on the phones. So it's more software what's involved. So how can you keep track of all the vulnerabilities that exist in your business? Well, this is where some kind of vulnerability management software can come in. It can scan all these devices and it can let you know what your vulnerabilities are. Because if you know what your vulnerabilities are, if you know what your weaknesses are, you can put something in place. Now, if you're a business that uses Microsoft 365, you might just be pleased to find out that Microsoft 365 has its own vulnerability management tool. But what does this tool look like? And what license do you need to have access to this tool? And how do you use this tool? Well, fortunately, what we're going to do now is jump onto that computer behind me and I'm going to show you all about the vulnerability management software within Microsoft 365. So without further ado, let's go. So before I launch into explaining how vulnerability management in Microsoft 365 works, I think it's worth spending a few moments talking about the licensing because as always with Microsoft, it can be a little bit confusing. So vulnerability management does come in a few different flavors. Okay, I've got a table showing on the screen now. The left-hand side services here are part of something called Defender Vulnerability Management Core Capability. Abilities, okay, and that is part of something called Defender for Endpoint Plan 2. Now, all these services, so Defender Vulnerability Management Core Capabilities, come as part of Microsoft 365 Business Premium. So, we always recommend that our clients use Microsoft 365 Business Premium because for the price, it contains everything your business needs from a collaboration 
and security perspective to run your business. Now also there is a Defender Vulnerability Management add-on and that comes with some more features. And thirdly, there is a Vulnerability Management standalone product. Now if you look down this list, you will notice those with a keen eye that it is just this and this. So it's these two bolted together which makes the standalone full vulnerability management product. Now this is included as part of the enterprise plans of Microsoft 365. But in this video, we're gonna be concentrating on the core capabilities, okay? So the tenancy that we've got that I'm gonna show you has Microsoft 365 Business Premium, okay? So I hope that explains the licensing. Now let's look at how you get in and access the vulnerability management. So you need to be logged into the admin center. So you can see that I'm logged in already. This is our admin center. And if we scroll down here, you can see there's a list of all the other admin centers. Now, what you need to do is open the security admin center, which will launch this one here. It's the Microsoft 365 Defender homepage. This is where we administer all the security features that are included with Microsoft 365 Defender. Now, what I also want you to do is keep this tab open and I want you to open the Endpoint Manager and that will open this screen here. This is our Microsoft Endpoint Manager, AKA Intune, okay? So that's that one there. I will come back and show you exactly why. But firstly, let's get into the security bit here and we want to go down to Endpoint and Vulnerability Management. You can see that this opens some more options here. So let's click on dashboard. And this is just a dashboard of all the vulnerability management. We can see the exposure score of all our devices. So you can see ours is medium. Now it's better to have a lower score on this one. The lower the score, the less risk. So you can see that this tenancy, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a section here for top security recommendations. We've got some events happening and we can scroll down and see some other settings as well. Things like the top exposed devices in our organization. Let's now move on to recommendations okay now we can see all the recommendations that Microsoft have to improve the security of our devices now there are a lot of recommendations look at all these recommendations to improve the security now you might think that we've got hundreds of devices but we haven't you can see here just on this first recommendation exposed devices 8 out of 11 so we've got about 11 devices in our organization and we've got all these recommendations so there's lots of work to do so let's just go through a few of these options because it can seem a bit overwhelming so the first one here look it's telling us that we need to update Microsoft Edge okay and we can look at here it's affecting 8 out of the 11 devices so most of the devices in our organization need Microsoft Edge updating now we can see we've got this threat column here and we've got this it's like a little beetle or something now some are red and some are black so this edge one here there is actually a verified exploit that's publicly available for this weakness so that means that we really do need to sort this vulnerability out okay and it's a software update that's what it is and we can see it's going to really affect our impact score so what's an impact score well it's a business impact of each recommendation okay so that is the top one in our organization at the moment so we've got all these software updates and we can scroll down here there's also some configuration changes so it's not just updates but there's some things that we can configure on all the devices to make them more secure so we've got software updates and we've got configuration changes so there should really be no excuse to have out-of-date software so in this scenario what are we gonna do okay so let's take this one here let's click into it so this screen here opens up and it gives us more information about the vulnerability. So it's telling us to update the Edge browser to a later version to mitigate five known vulnerabilities. So it's talking about the associated CVEs. This is associated with five CVEs. So what's a CVE? Well, the CVE is short for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, and it's a list of publicly disclosed computer flaws. 
So when someone refers to a CVE, they mean a security flaw that has been assigned a CVE ID number. So these are all publicly available weaknesses. And this is associated with five of them. And again, if we go into the last tab here, we can see which five it's associated with and when they were published, okay? Also, you can see the exposed devices. So all these devices need this update. That's quite a lot of the devices in our organization. And we can see what devices Edge is installed on. Okay, so that just gives us more information. So what are we gonna do with this vulnerability? Well, we've got a couple of options down here. We've got request remediation and exception options. Now let's first start with this exception options. There might be a reason why you don't want to update this software. Now you might be thinking, well, why? Perhaps it's it's not your responsibility. It's not software that you look after. Perhaps the new version of software, you're aware that it has problems. So whatever reason, you just don't want to update it. So you've got to accept the risk. So you can do that. You just create a justification for it. So we might click on here and we might say risk accepted. We might put in a context. You might put something like we are aware of the risk but the update is also a bit dodgy okay so that might be something you do in there and then you can expire that date so you can set it from 30 days from today's date so you can acknowledge the risk but you can kind of almost postpone it but more often than not what you're going to want to do is patch these machines so what we'll do is request remediation now this brings up a page here and we've got three remediation options we've got software update so actually just go and update the software on all those devices and that's the recommended option we've also got actually uninstall the software you might do that uh, there's some things like zoom that you might not want to put on devices and you might look at this and think well why is that installed in the first place in which case you might just uninstall the software and then another option which is a little bit more vague which is attention required but what we're going to choose is software update we just basically want to update the software so we're going to open a ticket in our endpoint manager and this is just for azure ad join devices which all our are when do we want to remediate this okay well I'm gonna set a date for Monday okay Monday the 19th of December and what priority is it well we'll set this to medium okay it's not really critical but it's not low either and we can just put some notes here update edge JE there's my initials okay we click on next and then we simply click on submit okay that remediation activity has been created so we can click on done now what happens now well I'm just gonna flip over to my endpoint manager okay I'm going to go on to endpoint security and I'm gonna look at security tasks now you can see I've got a security task here so what you can do in your business what you should do in your business is assign a person or a department to regularly review these and create security tasks. So now I've got a security task which says update the Edge browser. Okay, it gives us all the details and I can simply accept that. Okay, now that is an active task in the security tasks. We can go in there, we can click on complete it, but that is set to do now on Monday okay and once that's done we can complete it and we can go back here into remediation we can see here look it's also here so it's a bit of a pain that it's in two different windows but that's okay and once that completes so we can say it's not out of eight at the moment once that is complete we can mark it as completed okay so there's the first thing there we've got all the vulnerabilities and we can choose to remediate those when we want to do that okay the next section is inventories so what this does it gives us a list of all the software in our business and it tells you if there's any vulnerabilities any weaknesses it's almost just a, a different view it's a different view of the recommendations we can then go on to weaknesses and again there's all these CVEs listed here in my organization at the moment we've got 542 vulnerabilities and 34 critical ones so again there's a lot of work to do but this is just giving us a summary and over time we can get the security posture of our network in better condition now at the top right hand corner you can notice there's an email note notification setting I highly recommend that you set this up if I click on here I'll show you so we've got some 
notifications here and I'll just edit the rule. Basically, this is a vulnerabilities notification that you can set up. New vul vulnerability found, we can choose what threshold we want. So if you want all vulnerabilities to be alerted to, you can get that sent to an email address. New exploits, include organization name, click on next. You can fill in your email address there. So I highly recommend that you switch email alerts on. So I highly recommend that you set up alerts. So the next thing I want to talk about is the timeline and these are timelines of when certain vulnerabilities were known about so we've got an open ssl on the 16th of december okay so it's impacting two of our devices we need to sort that one out so it gives you a timeline of when vulnerabilities became known okay so what is this tutorials here well i think this is quite handy what these are are kind of simulations the tests that you can run to make sure that your devices are nice and secure there's different tests you can do you've got a, a socially engineered word document you can run now you can read the walkthrough so we'll open that here let's block that just load that there and it gives you it's an attack simulation so it shows you exactly what it's about exactly what it's going to be testing and exactly what devices need need to look like so they can be tested and it'll run you through the simulation so these are really good tutorials really good tests to make sure that your systems are nice and secure so that's a bit of an overview of vulnerability management in Microsoft 365. As I said earlier, it's a really good idea to get someone in your organization regularly looking at the dashboard, recommendations, looking at your weaknesses and getting those patched. But a recommendation is not to do everything at once. Now it might be really easy to come in here and just click everything and remediate, but that might cause havoc in your organization. Updating lots of software, making lots of configuration changes is just not the way to do it. So you've got to plan each one and get all your devices as secure as they can be. So I hope you found this video useful. As I've said a number of times, the Microsoft 365 Business Premium License is packed full of features to help your business collaborate, but also to help keep your business secure. Now, I look forward to seeing you again soon.